From summoning an alien invasion to feeding innocent farmers to a ravenous, gigantic chicken, there's no end to the utter chaos players can sow in Goat Simulator 3. When players start Goat Simulator 3, they are dropped right into the map's farmland. In that area, there is a small house called the Seed Sun Homestead. There, players get yelled at by an old woman sitting in a rocking chair and holding what looks like a bazooka on one shoulder. Players then quickly discover that this weapon shoots balls of yarn that knock them around when hit, preventing them from getting to the collectible tucked away inside the yard's chicken coop. Players are then tasked with putting an end to the grandma, which mysteriously opens up a door to her basement. When players enter the basement, they find a blue pixelated door that looks suspiciously reminiscent of the doors in Wolfenstein 3D. Going through the door reveals an entire Wolfenstein-esque level that swaps Nazi soldiers for a small army of yarn bazooka-wielding grannies that don't take kindly to meddlesome goats. As a reward for their trouble, players then get the option to mount one of the grandmas on the back of their goat, allowing them to commit their own yarn-based assaults on the go. If players go to the food factory, they can find a puzzle requiring them to line up conveyor belts on the assembly floor. After correctly placing the five conveyor belt sections, the line is complete. This allows bananas to travel down the line and make their way to a large machine connected to a massive tube. Then, like something out of David Cronenberg's The Fly, these poor test subjects are transformed into horrifying monsters that resemble giant bananas with long, floppy tongues, no arms, and bulging eyes that start running around the town. The banana-themed antics don't stop there, however. Players can also turn their goat into one of the creatures as well by entering one of the empty glass chambers. Once the goat has become a banana monster, players can also earn a questionable cannibalism-themed achievement or trophy by eating any of the smaller bananas scattered throughout the map. If terrorizing an innocent town with horrible creatures and causing absolute havoc wasn't enough, players are able to bring about a nuclear apocalypse. To do so, they have to make their way up to the top of the map's water tower. Once there, they can find a door that enters a secret observation room with a few scientists loitering about. Directly across from the door, however, is a one-way window with three big red buttons in a row. Two of the buttons are pressed to change latitude and longitude numbers, but the third is ominously labeled Launch. To complete the associated task, players first have to press both the latitude and longitude buttons once each, then hit Launch. This launches an atomic bomb into the ocean in the distance perfectly in front of the water tower's window, complete with a mushroom cloud and everything. Then players can keep pressing the first two buttons until they both read too high. Pressing the launch button after this will trigger a cutscene. Thankfully, the bomb doesn't detonate, but if the player runs over there and gives it an old-fashioned goat headbutt, they can detonate it themselves. This obliterates the surrounding area, which now features the saturated visuals and barren trees to help sell the whole end times vibe. One of the most brutal objectives in Goat Simulator 3 sees players targeting a handful of construction workers peacefully enjoying their lunch break. To do so, players have to locate the control panel at the base of the crane. This allows them to take control of the crane, which has its line connected to a steel beam with workers sitting on it to eat their lunch. Once the goat is in control of the crane, players are tasked with swinging the bar around to shake off the workers, presumably sending them careening to their death below. What makes the objective seem even more mean-spirited, however, is that there is no greater context or motivation behind it. All across the map of Goat Simulator 3, players can find three power plants with deactivated 5G towers attached to them. After reaching these power plants, players can run through the electrical current and grant their goat the temporary ability to conduct power. Players then need to run around to the three generators spread about the power plant. By doing so, players can activate the local 5G tower which in turn causes it to shine a bright green light into the distance. Once players repeat this at all three towers, eagle-eyed gamers may notice that each of the lights meets at the top of a distant skyscraper. A peculiar, otherworldly cutscene then follows. While the UFO's arrival doesn't seem to do much in the game itself, the implied alien invasion that's surely on the way shines a negative light on the GOAT's impact on the world. 
Deep in the woods, the goat will come across a group of protesters surrounding a big cage on a platform. The site is surrounded by signs protesting Bigfoot, giving players the task of finding the infamous cryptid and locking it up for good in the massive metal cage. The appearance of a cryptid like Bigfoot in Goat Simulator 3 would feel completely normal, especially next to the game's aliens, banana monsters, and pools of lava sitting in the open. However, players who are expecting to find a tall furry creature in the forest will be sorely disappointed. Instead, the task requires a goat to kidnap a woman peacefully sleeping in the forest. After finding the poor woman, players must drag her across the ground and throw her into the cage. The door automatically locks, trapping her in there for good. She doesn't say anything throughout the process, which might be for the best. The only thing that would make this kidnapping any worse is if players also had to hear this innocent bystander protesting being locked up in a cage as a cryptid. Near the Bigfoot protesters, players can find a lumberyard filled with plaid-clad lumberjacks performing various tasks. When the player arrives, however, they discover that one of the lumberyard's main machines has broken, and they are given the task of fixing it. The machine's issue is easy to see, as the metal tube of wiring that runs from the electrical box to the machine has a large gap in it. However, instead of fixing it by dragging a piece of equipment over to the machine, the game instructs our favorite goat to get two lumberjacks to help with the repairs. Unfortunately for these two workers, the goat must use them to complete the electrical circuit to the machine, electrocuting the two lumberjacks again and again. With the task completed, the player just leaves them in that state. Unless someone else comes along, the pair will be shocked indefinitely. Once you see this peaceful pond, you know it won't stay that way for long. There's a sign next to the pond that says fishing isn't allowed, but that does little to deter the nearby fisherman or the chaotic goat. And lucky enough for the goat, the area surrounding the pond is littered with giant bundles of dynamite. When players find the ponds, they are also given the task called fishing in bulk. The solution to the task is pretty straightforward, seeing as how the dynamite can be armed with a single headbutt. After knocking a few bundles of dynamite into the water, players see loads of trash and fish come flying away from the blast. At first glance, this task isn't as bad as some of the others on the list. Still, that doesn't diminish the fact that it makes players decimate a local pond and possibly kill an entire ecosystem. All because somebody left some loose dynamite lying around. Nestled among some trees and foliage near a small farm in Goat Simulator 3 is an ominous red circle. The circle pulses with red lights and has what looks like a scarecrow drawn inside it to make it look slightly more like a pentagram. This is all creepy enough on its own, but the red circle also has a more sinister purpose. Players need to grab scarecrows from the nearby farm and drag them into the circle and leave them there. Once this is done, a scary voice speaks in an incomprehensible language, making the act feel even more bizarre and unsettling than it already is, especially since it seems as though the player is sacrificing the scarecrows to some demonic entity. When players assemble the three scarecrows in the ring, a bright bolt of red lightning strikes them, accompanied by more sounds from whatever dark force is behind all of this nonsense. The lightning bolt brings the scarecrows to life, unleashing them on the unsuspecting world. While bringing to life a couple of scarecrows isn't necessarily a bad thing to do on the surface, it is obviously done with a sinister purpose. It also raises some serious questions about what the heck the goat is interacting with. The goat may stumble upon a small stage where three ballerinas are performing. Players are then asked to improve the dancer's performance, which immediately takes a turn for the absurd. Since the goat has limited options, the only way to do so is by headbutting each of them and giving them a good push. Doing so makes them spin much, much faster. But it wouldn't be Goat Simulator unless it took things to the next level. With all three of the ballerinas spinning next to one another at incredible speed, the resulting force is enough to create a massive tornado right behind the stage. Once a tornado is summoned, it sucks up the ballerinas, most of the audience, a ton of nearby furniture, and even the player, throwing everything in random directions across the map. In Goat Simulator 3, players can find a gas station on the world map called Fossil Fuel. It's especially hard to miss, thanks in part to the massive yellow dinosaur on the roof of the building. But the dinosaur is shooting oil from a can over its head into a bucket that is resting on the base of its tail. To get this achievement, players have to first make their way to the roof. Once there, players need to position their wily goat just below the dinosaur statue. Once the goat is in position and headbutts the statue from underneath, the dino will start leaking oil in a way that looks like it's relieving itself all over the goat leaving the animal covered in a dark, liquid substance. To put it lightly, even when you know where the liquid is coming from, it still conjures up a fairly disgusting image in the player's mind. 
Around the farms in the southern region of the map, players can find a large barn door surrounded by hay with two farmers and a massive food dish nearby. Next to the barn door, there is also a large metal bell that the player can ring by headbutting it. When the bell is rung, the barn door opens up to reveal a gigantic chicken that emerges and eats whatever is in its food bowl. Naturally, this makes players wonder what they can feed the chicken. With the two farmers so close by, they are the easiest things to knock down and put in the bowl for the giant chicken. Once the beast is summoned, it eats the farmer in the bowl without hesitation. The chicken lays a large egg afterward that then rolls out of the barn through a rusty pipe and leads out to a pile of hay near the food bowl. Players can then break that egg to reveal the very same farmer who was just eaten, setting up a brutal cycle in which players can continuously feed a farmer to a massive chicken.